morning, everybody. Welcome in. This is Doug Upstone of Doc Sports, and I am right next to a handsome fellow next to me, Scott Spritzer. And uh, we're here to talk some college basketball today and through the rest of the uh, season, going right up till April. Hopefully, Scott, that's the case. Uh, hey, Scott, I know you're still kicking butt in college basketball. Why don't you let everybody know what you're, what you're doing on the sides? I, I know on the sides you are just on fire. Explain to everybody what you're doing. Well, thanks a lot, Doug. Uh, yeah, it's been a real nice run in college basketball. Uh, up over 4,300 for the college basketball season with college basketball sides. In fact, going all the way back to day two of the season. I'm, we're going to talk about a team a little bit later in this uh, show, Doug, this week that cost me my first seven-star loss on Wednesday night. And we had been 100% undefeated with our seven-star plays. And it wasn't a bad beat. It was a bad performance by a team we're going to talk about. So I'm going to unload on them a little bit when we get to that game. But, uh, you know, we'll have at least three games of the package for the weekend on Saturday. And, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll find a six-star or seven-star play because when you got a, a whole busload of basketball games, you can certainly find a top-end play or two. Uh, so we got that going for the weekend. And, again, I'm up every single day of the week, as are you, Doug Upstone. And, and uh, the college basketball season has been going well. NHL starting to click. And, of course, we've got NFL Conference Championship weekend and have a seven-star going. And I just want to say something. I, I, I'm, I don't like to do the pat-your-back stuff too much, but we did hit that eight-star play last week. And as I mentioned, I call it the grand slam with those eight-star plays as we were able to go 4-0. and We had Green Bay over the Rams. How about you this weekend, Doug? What you got going? The, uh, well, like like yourself, Scott, you know, college basketball, The I, I, as I admitted last week, I'm not doing quite as well as you, but I do have a winning season uh, it, it, uh, continuing on. And I've had some, uh, in the last week to 10 days, some nice streaks in the NBA and the NHL and, you know, got some, to be perfectly honest, got some nice sales out of that then as well. People are following and seeing exactly what I'm doing. So that's worked out well. And, you know, along with that, Scott, you know, you mentioned the NFL, you know, you and I both have big plays going this weekend. And so we're going to try and continue what we've done. I know you've been on fire. Uh, I was hot, most of the season cooled off a little bit, you know, once the playoffs started, but really did my homework this weekend for this upcoming uh, NFL championship. So ready to go there. And, and everybody that's watching, let's not also forget. You know, besides what Scott and I are talking about, and Scott has some of these sports as well as I do, we also have soccer, we got uh, UFC, golf, tennis, and NASCAR is what, three weeks away or about yep. three or four weeks away? So we got that on the horizon too. So there's a lot going on at Doc Sports and everybody, you know what? You can join in the fun and get part of the package to, to take care of it. And to help you, we got $60 of free money to give you. That's right. You go in, if you've never been to Doc's, uh, sign up for the uh, $60 of free money that you can take take advantage of. And it's good for all premium picks. We're not talking about free picks. No, 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 no. Premium picks, like what Scott and I put out on a daily basis. So you can get those for free. When, when signing up with the $60, it, there's almost nothing to it. Sign up today. That's what I'm telling you. All right, Scott, let's get into this. Okay, we want to make this uh, quicker, more fun, more interesting. So that's what we're going to try and do. We're going to start off with Friday night. We're going to the FS1 game. Michigan against Purdue. Give me your thoughts on that one. Yeah, you know, I, I power rate Michigan four points better than Purdue in this spot. They're, of course, playing this game in West Lafayette, Doug. It's not a line. It just happens to be my power rating. And this season has been so weird with the COVID issues, players missing games, teams canceling games, uh, that I don't always go with my power rating. It's very interesting this year. And I don't remember doing this in the past due to certain spots created by scheduling or again, COVID issues or what have you, there'll be times when let's say I make a, a team three over another, they come four and I still play on that team that I have undersold myself with the power rating by a point, <clears throat> excuse me, it's just different adjustments we've had to make this year and it's worked pretty well. But again, I got Michigan power rated four over Purdue on the road in this spot. Um, one of the things that I look about this, you know, Purdue of course has won four in a row as they head into this Saturday game. And we're not likely to see this team, if they get a lead, busted open, uh, a big lead. Six of their last seven games, the Boilermakers, have been decided by single digits. And I'd like to see Michigan, Doug, before I jump in, get to the free throw line a little more and maybe do a little bit better when it comes to defensive turnover percentage. It's a little weak there. I know that's nitpicking. We're talking about one of the top teams in college baskets who proved they were human in a game last week at Minnesota but came right back 
cashed for me, six-star play next time out against Maryland. But again, I'm going to look for this. If it's a round four, I probably will make a move on this game. It's got to be within a point. Yeah, that, 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 that was an excellent point, Scott. Now, myself, I, you know, I'm just going to give a range here. Uh, I'm going to say that, you know, I'm, I'm going to speculate based on my numbers that it's going to fall somewhere in the two to four points for Michigan. And so, so with that in mind, you know, the, um, Purdue, you know, they're, they're, they're tough to figure, to be perfectly honest. Uh, you know, they do a very good job on defense. They're very physical. And that could they could rough up Michigan a little bit. Uh, the thing, though, that I like about Michigan, their defense is even better, holding teams to 38% shooting, and they're 55th in defensive efficiency. My concerns with Purdue is their three-point shooting is hot and cold, game to game, okay? So you never know what you're going to get exactly. And when they go to the free throw line, Scott, they're under 70%. If I can get a two or a three with Michigan, I think I got to take it. I'm going to say Michigan covers at West Lafayette. So, all right. So there's two there's two thoughts on that game. Now let's move ahead to Saturday. And uh, Kent State <clears throat> and Toledo are going to be in MAC action, or MACTION as uh, they say during the football season. Uh, both these teams are at or near first place. Go ahead, Scott. What do you think on that one? Yeah, Kent State blew that, what, nine-point second-half lead and lost to Toledo by two earlier this season. But it's tough for me to back a team, even though they're in revenge, when they have two wins all season against teams that are ranked inside the top 200 and no wins against any teams that are ranked uh, inside the top 112. That's Kent this season. A pretty decent two-point accuracy with this team, but they commit too many fouls for my taste, and they don't draw enough. In other words, Free throw attempts to field goal attempts ratio is a big deal for me. And Kent is low in that order when it comes to the offensive end. And again, they send teams to the free throw line a little bit too much for my blood in what could be a close game. And then you got Toledo, who's all about the three-point shot at both ends of the floor, whether it's on defense and you talk about the way they play uh, on the deep perimeter or the way they shoot on the offensive end. Listen, we know what the line was when, they, when these teams uh, played against each other earlier this season. I think Toledo probably going to be around seven. I'm just going to tell you right now, Doug, I am passing. I have not done well in the back over the years. It has been my jinx conference. I've probably had one Mac play this entire basketball season. Yeah. In this one, you know, Toledo, I mean, Toledo seems to be uh, head and shoulders uh, at the class of the, of the conference. And I, I would have to agree. Um, they're just, they're just playing more solid basketball. As you said, you know, they're, their, their three-point accuracy, you know, they really haven't had many off games, you know, so, and I right. think that's a key. And, you know, I, I would really like to take Kent State here with, with some more points. I'm just not sure that there's going to be enough there. So like you, uh, I'm not going to pass altogether. I'm just a, uh, if I can get Toledo at, say, five or six, I think, I think they're worth a look. Beyond that, I would agree with you. I'd probably pass. Next if up, it was any lower, Baylor, just as a fair final thought on that, if it was any lower than that, yeah. you almost are thinking the team has a chance to win outright. And again, it's so tough for me to back a basketball team that can't beat teams inside the top 150, the top 200. And that's been Kent this season. Yep. Excellent point, Scott. All right. So let's move ahead to Baylor and Oklahoma State. And I think this is a really interesting game. Um, you know, if, if Gonzaga is number one, then Baylor is 1A. Okay, I don't think the difference between these two two teams is much. Uh, Baylor actually plays better defense overall. Now the style is a little bit different, but they're also playing you know against uh, let's say stronger competition. Also, I like the depth that Baylor, Baylor has and the ability to play different ways. Uh, when they get in slowdown games, they have the types of players that can compete in, in those types of games, and and they have you know more scoring options uh, coming coming off the bench as well. What what fascinates me, though, about Oklahoma State, and I've seen them play, I think it's three times now, is that that switching defense that they play. I mean, they, they come at you with a zone, and it's a zone extended. Then they mix it up with some man-to-man, -man, and they have taken some teams definitely out of what they like to do in different games. And their three losses, Scott, are by a total of seven points this season. But, <laughs> and it's a big but. <laughs> now that we're talking about Baylor, just like we saw last Saturday, Every guy, they were held close, but then at crunch time, the last five minutes, and I think it's going to be the same thing again. All of a sudden, Baylor's skill, power, ability to make free throws in the clutch, I think that's the difference in the game. And if the lines, let's just say, right around six or seven, which I anticipate, I think Baylor gets it done.
What do you think, Scott? Yeah, you know, I'm glad you brought that up about what Oklahoma State does defensively, throws teams out of their game a little bit. To put that in a football context, it's kind of like when you go the whole season, you're playing traditional, for the most part, type offenses or what has become the regular offense that you see. And then all of a sudden, you're facing an option team with one week to practice for it, and it throws you out of your rhythm a little bit. And it works better for Oklahoma State, I would think, outside of the conference more than inside the conference where everybody's got your info and your game tapes and everything else and sees you a couple of times a season. But it does have to be factored into your handicapping when it comes to Oklahoma State. So I'm glad you brought that up. They played several close games uh, against the best of the Big 12, and they had the five-point win over Kansas, which was a very interesting affair of the second half because they blew a 16-point lead with about nine minutes to go to Oak State, trailed with about one minute to go to the Jayhawks, then got – back in the game and, and got the win and they won by five. They did get beat up on the boards in that game a little bit. That concerns me here uh, because Baylor is sixth in the country in offensive rebound percentage. So we might see putbacks for Baylor when they miss shots. Uh, the Baylor Bears, they are fourth and first in adjusted offensive efficiency and defensive offensive, offense efficiency respectively, which is really something because you'll see teams that are like maybe their 10th in one, but they're like 40th in the other and, and, and vice versa. Baylor's top five in both. It's ridiculous how good this team is. They've had five days off since that went over Kansas. And by the way, if you laid the points with Baylor in that one, you took one of the toughest beats of the entire oh. season with that crazy bank shot at the end of the game by the Jayhawks and how that final minute unfolded. The problem for me when it comes to back in Oak State is that they can't shoot the three. Uh, you have to be able to hit the three against Baylor because they're so darn stingy defending the two. I, I power rate Baylor about 10 points better than Oak State, even in a road game at Stillwater, Doug. There we go. There you go. A couple, couple, uh, couple of picks for Baylor. All right, next up, Clemson, <laughs> Florida State. Um, Scott, to me, the ACC doesn't appear all that strong this year. Uh, Virginia does, okay? But even mm -hmm. they had a couple of kind of odd losses you know, early in the season. Uh, North Carolina and Duke, nowhere to be found. But here we are, Florida State, rising to the top again. You know, I, I think you agree with me. Last year, if there, if we would have gotten into the tournament, Florida State would have been among the choices for the Final Four. Okay, right. I, They were playing so well. And what's their key? It's starting to emerge again, that depth. They, you know, they go literally 12 guys, and that's just that's just their MO. That's how Leonard Hamilton is recruits, how he recruits now. He gives guys playing time and he gets talent, talented players that, that go there. And there's also a path to the NBA. So that's another very attractive uh, aspect of, of going to Florida State. And in this one, they lost to Clemson uh, earlier this year, I think by 10, but now their defense is playing much better. Clemson has real issues scoring. I think they're averaging 66 points a game. Uh, and I don't know. I can't see the Knowles not in this one, not burying the uh, Clemson Tigers. I'm thinking this game's going to be around 10. Might be a little bit higher, but I got no problem taking Florida State in this one, Scott. What do you think? You know, I got a little story about the Seminoles a couple of years ago. I, I can't remember the exact season, but it was a couple of years ago. Uh, they were heading into... January, I guess it was, and they were looking like the best team in college basketball. They're always able to recruit uh, outstanding blue chip athletes and basketball players to Tallahassee under this coaching staff. And if people know DocSports.com, then they've heard the name Matt Holt. If they know sports betting, they usually know the name Matt Holt. And at the time, he was the, uh, I believe he was the uh, manager at uh, CG Sportsbooks back then. And now he's moved on to even bigger and better things. But uh, Matt and I were betting on Florida State early in the season. We were hitting them with futures. I think Matt had a, a stack of about like this. It was starting to compare to uh, Tolstoy novel type stuff, War and Peace. And uh, he had a stack of tickets of futures at all kinds of different prices. And by the time we got done hitting Florida State uh, for a future in, I don't know, mid-December, third week of December, they had gone from like 120 to one all the way down to like 25 to one. And we're hitting them everywhere in Vegas. And then... I get a text out of nowhere, like in mid-January, and the Knolls are just rolling. Mid to late January, and he goes, hey, man, can you run over to the Red Rock Station Casino? Still has them at 80 to 1. So, of course, I, I do. I run over there to Red Rock, not too far from where I happen to reside. And uh, and I jump on him, and I got him at 75 to 1. And the sportsbook director, who I know over there, he comes over, and he goes, do you think that's a bad number? 
And I go, well, if I would have brought my tickets, I would have shown you that they're down to 25, 30 to one now. So, and he kind of chuckled. He goes, well, I got to root against you, Scott, on this one. Now, Florida State, you know what they do in the tournament. What do they do? They got one of the best teams, best chances to win the whole ball of wax in the field of 32, the second round they get beat. You know, there you go. Uh, but that's the Florida State Seminoles story for me. But they are fantastically talented, extremely well coached. Now, I'm going a little bit long here, but there's a reason. The story, and then I got to just kick the crap out of the Clemson Tigers for a minute. They were my seven-star loss on Wednesday. First seven-star defeat of the entire college basketball season for me. They did not show up. They obviously had no clue that they were my seven-star play, darn them. Uh, and, and so I'm watching the game from the opening tip against Ja Tech, and Georgia Tech just kicked the crap out of them from the three-point line. And here's a team, Clemson, that is right now 18th in adjusted defensive efficiency in all of college basketball. Yet their last two games against Virginia and Georgia Tech, they gave up 85 and 83 points. They allowed those two teams to combine to make 31 of 53, or 58% of their three-pointers. Uh, that's ridiculous. It, it, 31 of 53 from area code three is like making 46 of 53 two-pointers. That's how bad they were on the deep perimeter, on the defensive end. And oh, by the way, Clemson, Florida State not only has the revenge that Doug Upstone just spoke about, they are the 28th ranked team in three-point shooting, and we're just nine of 32 from behind the arc in that first meeting, which Clemson won. Clemson better get their perimeter defense back on track or Florida State just rolls on this one. <laughs> there, there we go, Scott. That's 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 a good story. I like that one a lot. And uh, speaking of things I like a lot, I can tell you right now, uh, just a reminder for everybody, Docs has $60 worth of premium picks for free. Uh, it's a the, the sign up is fast. It's simple. It's really, it's really great to do. And you're going to get expert picks from uh, – whatever handicapper that you choose and there's 12 of them at docs and they're and docs sports is known for their unmatched customer service uh, we, like i said we got uh 12 picks that uh, 12 different guys you can choose from okay to, to get these picks they're, they're they're the same as the member picks and there's absolutely no obligation of any kind for you okay no credit card needed all you do is sign up and you're good to go all right so sign up today at Doc Sports and get $60 worth of free picks. All right, let's move ahead, Scott. We're going to go back to the Big Ten, and we're going to talk Ohio State and Wisconsin. I'll let you lead this one off. Yeah, this is going to be my free play for the show, Doug. And uh, what a battle. I love watching the Big Ten, my highest power-rated conference. I'm not breaking any news there. Most people have it as the highest-rated conference in college basketball this season. I'm going to make it quick because I did talk a lot in that last game. But listen, the Badgers – uh, play some of the best defensive basketball in the nation. We know that. They're fifth in the country in adjusted defensive efficiency. Their weakness is their own two-point shooting, and that's a scary proposition uh, when you're talking about laying a couple of buckets against a good basketball team. Ohio State comes in with the fifth best adjusted offensive efficiency numbers, so we're going to see strength against strength in this particular game. They also own offensive metrics uh, that are strong overall, and they're off a loss to the Boilermakers. Uh, they do have road wins to the Buckeyes of a Rutgers and when they were playing better and Illinois this season. So winning on the conference road is part of Ohio State's in-season resume. I think it's going to be tough not to back the Buckeyes in this one for folks on Saturday. And uh, I like them here. I think Ohio State plus the points makes it as the free play for me for this week's show. Well, to, to your point, Scott, the other thing, too, that, that Ohio State has done is that every time they've lost this year, they have come back and won the next game, all, all three of them. So so they've been strong and they've covered the spread in, in each situation. The only thing, though, that I wonder here is with Wisconsin is that we're starting to see them get back to their style of play. And in the last two games, now, granted, uh, Rutgers and Northwestern are not exactly high-scoring teams at the present time, but they've given up low 50s to those two teams in the last two games. And so I think they're kind of getting back to what they do. Uh, it's always, you know, it's it's not impossible, but it is annually very difficult to win at the Kohl Center, okay, for sure. any opposing team. And so from this one, Scott, you and I are going to disagree on this one, okay, which is good, okay. This is what uh, this is how it should be. Is that everything shouldn't be the same? I'm going to say Wisconsin is is the play on this one, and we're going to move ahead from there. Next up, now I this team I got to talk about, Scott. Alabama. Alabama is on fire right now. This is my opinion is if Michigan is the third best team in the country today, 
To me, the fourth best team is Alabama. They are absolutely crushing SEC teams, 7-0, and 6-1 and against the spread. They're, they're almost Nick Saban-like in the fact that they're winning by 18 <laughs> points per game in conference play. So they, are, like I said, you watch them play, there's nothing they don't do well, and they haven't done well. And I, when they were 5-3, and three, Scott, I was looking at that and saying, you know what, maybe Nate Oates isn't the fit. Nate Oates, of course, being the coach of Alabama. Right. But I thought, well, maybe he's not a fit. Well, guess what? I was way off base on, on that uh, assumption at the time, and this team is just on fire. I think they're going to be – Eh, let's just say right around 14 point favorite or so against Mississippi and the Bulldogs, they're going to be going right back into the kennel because they are going to get blasted. Yeah, I, I'm going to throw this one at you. I mean, Nate Oates is a terrific coach. I remember his last two years at Buffalo before he took the job at Alabama, he went 59 and 13 with those Buffalo Bulls. The guy can coach, the team's buying into what he's doing. Uh, you know, if you look at them right now, I think they're ranked, and I'm not talking about power ratings, I'm talking about the AP rankings and all that stuff, but they're ranked 11th, and they were, but most people had them in their top 15 before the season began. I had them 13th, I think Ken Palm had them like 14th or something like that, maybe it was Blue Ribbon who had them 14th, but we were all basically in the same ballpark, and like you, after the first six or seven games, I'm scratching my head about this team going, there's a ton of talent here, they ain't getting it done, I don't know what's missing, and then again, maybe it was the fact that they didn't have, you know, enough preseason work before the season began because of the COVID issues. We've seen it affect the one and done teams, as I like to call them, like Kentucky and Duke. And to a certain extent, North Carolina, not having those travel spots where they go overseas and they develop a chemistry among real young one and done players. They didn't have that this year. Those teams are struggling. But Alabama righted the ship real quick. You know, I was always a Ben Howland fan. I don't know if it's time for him to call it quits, though. I, I look at this Mississippi State team. They've got more talent than they're showing right now. They had the win over Florida. Then they lay an egg against Ole Miss. They've scored 55 points or less four times this uh, season. They struggle shooting the two-pointer. And when I look at this team, Mississippi State, I'm like, man, they're in a really good spot. If you look at the two schedules for these two teams, Miss State, 37th in the nation, in defending the two-pointer and coming off a loss against their rival and Alabama getting all this publicity. Miss State's in a great spot, but I can't take them. I can't do it. I can't go against Bama here. I would agree with you 100%, Scott, on that one. So, that, so there you have it, everybody. Six free picks, okay? Some strong opinions, uh, everything there. So get you prepped for this coming weekend. Now, Scott, why don't you let everybody that's listening let them know exactly one more time what you got going this weekend. All right. We got in uh, football, the NFL, the conference championships. I do have one seven-star side. Of course, the games go on Sunday. It's available uh, Thursday after 6 p.m. Eastern, right up until kickoff. So you can check that out if you wish. We're on a real nice run. We're up over $5,100 on our current uh, football run uh, for $100 per unit better. So we'll look to keep that going. We're also 9-2 and two with my last 11 plays rated six stars or higher. And then in basketball, as Doug mentioned earlier, listen, I'm looking to get back on track after that seven-star loss on Wednesday, but we've been good all season, up over $4,300. Doug Upstone, he came aboard uh, at Docs, I believe it was uh, about, what, a year and a half ago or so, and you've been at or near the top of the standings in football, doing well in college basketball. What you got going this weekend, buddy? Yeah, same thing as what you're talking about, Scott. Got a six-unit play uh, going on Sunday in the NFL. Uh, we got two two pretty interesting games, that's for sure. And that the uh, I think the, the with the lines, you know, the traditional, you know, with the numbers that just say basically three. Uh, I think it's the when the lines at three championship games are like uh, 13 and 12, I believe, in, in recent games. Uh, so that's that's adds a little bit to trying to figure out exactly what to do. But like you, Scott, I feel very strongly about one side, and that's why I got a six-unit play. I for sure, also, as you mentioned, I'll have a seven-unit play in college basketball. You know, deep card, uh, ready to go there. NBA, continue to do well. NHL, getting it figured out once again. So I'm looking forward to a monster weekend, Scott. Doing a little uh, old uh, smash, uh, smash Mouth Sports there, using some of those terms if, uh, that I remember seeing you on do the videos from years past. So that's 15, Scott Spritzer. I'm just so you know, it's 15. <laughs> What's that? I said, just <laughs> so you know, it was only 15 when I was doing that show. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's what I thought. Um, so he's Scott Spritzer. I'm Doug Upstone. This is Doc Sports. Thanks for watching. See you next week.